Hi everyone. We are at my studio space. I have before me my now basically finished figures of Dean Cornwell's study. Um, if you saw my last video, I was working on them from the start for the hour. Then I spent about another hour and finished them. Then I started this additional figure who is in this particular reference and he is actually looking inside a car at um, like well, there's another guy there and there's a kid but I just went with ignoring those other people throwing him in here um, in basically an awkward spot it kind of looks like he's um, you know really kind of disrupting their conversation by looking between their waists um so but anyway the point is to work on the figures and i've started this one and i'm gonna just continue um to finish it in the next 20 minutes after having a sip of my chocolate tea so here we go <coughs> Ah. So I just have a little magnet board in front of me and I've set my reference up on it and I've already drawn a little bit today um, so you know hopefully that'll help me to uh, do this a little better than if I was not having drawn at all today. Um, one thing that would be nice is if I could have some kind of book to rest my hand on as it's going to be on the side of the paper. That's better. It's perfect. So, just do that. Once again, I am. Um, really making YouTube videos just for myself and I like to remind myself of that because that's that's really what's gonna keep them going is if I start to get caught up in uh, external thinking rather than take this as a time to reflect on my process ramble on about anything at all and simply enjoy the process of illustrating. Um, I will be doing myself a disservice. Um, I, I've started these for me and it's a selfish, self-sustaining reason and perhaps you will enjoy having them as well. Um, of course, it would be for some reason, even though no one might watch this, it feels better to release it into a world that is able to view it, that has the visible spectrum of their eyes capable of watching such a thing, um, even if they don't. So it's odd, and uh, maybe it doesn't really fit the logic, but uh, maybe it is. So I'm gonna try to make sure I don't cover up my. Uh... The only thing I can do is I can turn this off, and there you won't get a shadow of my hand on the image, and as much. Yeah, no, no. And uh, I guess let's see good enough. So. Yeah. So anyway, this Cornwall image here. Um, I started. Uh, drawing and filming this at a particular time of day where I felt like this would be the optimal thing for me to do and I was getting I was I was participating in some other aspects of life which um, which were simply not as 
resonant or as true to what it is I felt would really feel empowering and if I stayed too long in the the other things and didn't come to my drawing table um, perhaps could have snowballed sometimes drawing is the best thing I uh, I meditated earlier and I do other spiritual practices and things to focus the mind and pay attention to the breath and the body and and uh, it's it's possible to even pay attention to the body and the breath right now as I'm as I'm working on this picture uh, it's a little more difficult because it kind of requires more of your mind to be active which is a good thing um, but at the same time it is what I would call it um, it is yeah it's just it's a thing so as I mentioned it at first I started to pay attention to my sensations on my legs and then as I started talking about it more I kind of forgot again um, and it's important to keep my attention also on you know the job at hand and the many things that required um, thought in this picture but to be in tune with the body and to really be connected in oneself in that way is really going to help in terms of everything for art dexterity and you know, like the the body's doing this. My hand is the thing that is holding the pencil that creates this. So if I'm in, attuned with it, I'm well off. If I'm not, I am. I am just less attentive, less in the zone, really, less um, alive. If I'm caught up in thoughts and I'm not with what's here then I'm less alive because I'm thoughts are not alive they're not breathing they're not here to stay or to you know, they're they're a stream of, of things and um, streams of things are all over the place <laughs> in life and uh, what, what is a stream to pay attention to? Perhaps the breath. And I say perhaps quite um, rhetorically because I think it's very true. And uh, it can also be a challenge. I've done many meditation courses of 10 days long and still I just had a meditation like a couple hours ago and it was really really challenging to sit still and to pay attention to my breath but I am trying and that is what I'm doing so and there's many layers to it. Um, talking about it really doesn't do it justice. And uh, maybe I should just <laughs> should just not talk about it. I really uh, like talking and drawing like this. It's 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 it feels really good somehow. Um, it's like, I don't know, well I know, I know, it's, uh, I don't know if I put in words. It's funny, I um, study with Watts Atelier online, it's a school in San Diego. In my opinion, it's the best art school around, 
and they um, they have an excellent online program and classes online and all this stuff and so I am happy to study with them and Jeff Watts is the biggest inspiration of mine who inspires me into action into actually doing the daily task of sitting down at the paper or the canvas and putting lines on you know or strokes on paper uh, or canvas it's he's a uh, he's the only artist who really gets me into the zone so much compared to anyone else about the the discipline and the the joy of practice and um He's the founder of the school, and I've talked about him on my, you know, um, videos before, and I will again, I'm sure. Um, but what I was going to say this time about him was, um, hmm, what was it? Hmm. It was that when he he usually talks nonstop, kind of like what I seem to be doing. Um, but when he stops talking for a moment, um, he'll often go into saying, "Hey, this is weird. I've stopped talking. I bet that's unusual. I bet uh, you guys don't hear that often. It's probably something you know. You're probably like freaked out. Like what's happened?" And then uh, he just continues and continues again, and it's like. He's, he's started talking again when he acknowledges how weird it is that he's stopped. And uh, it just goes on again. And it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> so. I think I've certainly developed um, or mirror him in a lot of ways myself in terms of my approach to things and my mentality and and uh, the way I speak about art for sure um, and yeah who, who I am as a person I feel like I desired um, a a art teacher and also like a father figure as a as like an artist um, teacher and and uh, you know, I, I heard I watched some things just recently about the Joseph Campbell theory or concept that someone in life who's a male um, eventually, if they're lucky or whatever, uh, they 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 um, come across a second father figure. And for me, that really seems to be Jeff. Um, and it's like they they become an apprentice of sorts under this this new adult male um, figure, and it's a different relationship, you know. But it's it helps the uh, individual become a more solid person, a, a man, uh, someone who. Uh, can take care of themselves in the world and it's it's a little it's it's a new step beyond the general um, relationship with the paternal father which um, which uh, has its own benefits and, and importance so I've been uh, fortunate to find, to uh, manifest that, and uh, I really am grateful. Um, so I'm going to bring this up to the camera a little bit so you can just see what's going on a little bit clearer. It's been uh, almost. 14 minutes, um, so things are you know, coming along. 
I have this little guy which is working quite well, which I could use to add some shading to things. Shading, shading. Just really, the values on this image are much darker than what I have, but I'm not going to get there uh, with this pencil, with this single graphite pencil. So I've just gone with the fact that um, it's going to be lighter all around, so that's fine. It's really more about calligraphy um, in terms of line and also shading. Well, you know, I can get the same thing other than it's just a little darker. So it's all good. It's all good. And it's looking cool. And I actually drew something earlier today for our story. Um, Lantern Valley Studios dot com where you can see what I've been working on with my brother for the last decade and uh, we don't really have much um, for anything finished but you can see our sprites and our characters um, and such on our Instagram which is at Lantern Valley and you can even support us on Patreon and um, buy our behind the scenes packages on Gumroad. So many options. So earlier today I was sketching something for World 26 which we're developing at the moment and that after have, I, I sketched this particular image for the purpose of utilizing the information so that I could sketch um, pretty rough um, not nearly as finished or cool as <laughs> this, really, um, as refined, but uh, that I could sketch something for our story, World 26, and and uh, utilize the same uh, because because these guys are kind of wearing similar costumes with the with the folds and the way the fabric and the the dress and all that stuff, and then um, also the pose of this guy bending over and different people standing there is uh, was also part of the scene, so I used this as inspiration. And I'm going to revisit the sketch I did in maybe a year or something. Um, we're essentially doing two stories at once, and we have intervals of two months or four months. Um, so every two months we're switching out a story and we're starting on another story and we spend four months developing that story. And we're doing five this year and we're really just writing them and coming up with the ideas and bringing them to like a phase where then we could revisit it and look at it and understand where to begin and that we've, we have a lot to just really then at that point um, refine and bring the illustrations and the writing to its its finished state and it'll be um, most of it will be you know there's there's a uh, writing probably not too well there be edits but like the illustrations are really the thing where um, it'll take a while uh, once you know it'll take another four months at least to uh bring a treasure tale, that's what they're called, the stories, um, to its published -able publishing state where we feel we're ready. And it's also good because it's like writing anything, like we've never written one of these stories before, so we're giving ourselves um, the time to attempt writing and drawing several so we understand what kind of medium it is because this is not just a normal novel it's it's uh, its own kind of medium so we've never seen it before really and we've never done it before and to give ourselves some time and space to uh, do a few rounds of that will be um, will be really good Doing something. So, um, 
yeah, if, if any of that makes sense, if none of it makes sense, um, check out our stories at Lantern Valley. Um, there's a, there's, oh, here we go, here we go. At Lantern Valley, there we go. And um, you know, once you once you go there, you will find a whole bunch of behind the scenes content, which we've been releasing all year, and it shows all these different videos where we're creating our stories real time, just like this. You get to hear us talking about things. You get to hear us exploring ideas, um, so much, and. It'll all be cool to listen to if you're into just the, the, the real heart of creating something from scratch and exploring ideas and coming up with things and, you know, like, it's a gold mine of, of um, that very thing in essence. Um, and then it's going to be really awesome once the stories are out and you can then revisit your favorite... Um, part of this, you know, the series of stories and look at this particular month in uh, June 2020 where this was released and, or the, this idea was come up with and you can see us sketching out the first thing and then you see the finished product and it's in there and you, um, you have the story and you bring it home and you hang it on your wall or that's, uh, that's the kind of story it is, you can hang it on your wall. So... That'll be really cool. And that's exactly <clears throat> um, the kind of thinking that keeps me drawing, but also the moment-to-moment -moment practice and the, uh, the joy of liking different artists. Something I didn't really um, catch on to when I was little. No one ever told me that it's like, hey, if you feel like um, you'd, you'd like to paint or draw like Norman Rockwell, try drawing like him, you know? He has a picture, he just, you know, here's, his, here's the illustration he did. Why don't you try copying it? See if you can do it. And uh, no one ever said that. <laughs> um, and I, I never really, I, I would just, I would copy stuff, but... You know, it was never, never really with the emphasis on, oh, I can learn from other artists who draw good. I can draw what they drew. And then as I do that, parts of their knowledge and the way they're going about stuff is entering my brain and body and everything about the process. Uh, so, we have come to 20 minutes, but I really only have like a shoe and a pant leg left, so I'm just gonna finish that up. The way I practice is 20 minutes, or tw I set my timer usually in, in a way that it's, it's not gonna beep when it finishes, but it just goes up and up so I can see the time so I look at the time right now and I see it's going 22 minutes and 48 seconds, 49, 50. So it goes up so I can just check in whenever I feel like it and see what time it is. Um, which, you know, may have the, may cause me to at some point draw for a very long time and not check it. But I've drawn so much with the timer set up at 20 minutes. Um, that I really have it ingrained in me, I feel, where when it's about 20 minutes, I just, I glance and I'm like, hey, it's 20 minutes. Um, or I can also check, it's nice, like, oh, 10 minutes, okay. Refocus and understand, like, where I'm at with the picture. What am I trying to achieve? Um, am I focusing on the right thing? Did I, you know, at this point, how much have I, 
gotten from this study. And then it's like, okay, I got half the time left. I get 10 minutes more. So that's really good to have a, just a, you could do that the other way. You could actually time it so it's going to beep and you'd be able to see when you're, you know, at the halfway mark. But um, I like it this way. And then it doesn't beep so loudly in my face, which uh, used to happen a lot. And, uh, and then if I feel like going for like a little longer, like right now, I don't have to stop the timer. I can just simply keep going and I'm aware I'm going over time and I watch it so I don't go too far over. Usually never over, well, half an hour is like, okay, gotta stop, take a break. Um, so, this has been good. I've really, um, you know, I've been, I've been enjoying this. I've been getting a sense of things. I feel like I've worked pretty quick. Um, and at the same time, done some good description of things and well not really not really of my picture but just of life and uh describing life so sometimes that uh, that's fun to do pretty much all the time actually so um yeah unless you're like trying to get beyond the words then maybe not and anyway i'll leave it there the finished finished thing um bring up the camera da, da, da. and uh move it over move those guys so what's he looking at between their legs who knows i don't know that's all folks See you tomorrow.